I've been sitting on three unreleased videos. It's like a 16X, bro. Zoom in like I'm freaking American Sniper out here. Wait. No! We're trying to pistol. Spawn Peak Six Siege exists. Oh my gosh, the pistol has an ACOG. It's completed. Oh, look at my drone! My drone is an ACOG! It will never be released to the public. Where have I been? Upload, Mr. Holmes. Upload! Well, one of these videos was almost sponsored by Ubisoft. What's up, you bunch of screen lookers? This video is Ubisoft. They wanted me to promote Ella's new- There was months of prep. There was traveling. There was a ton of money poured into this. And after months and months, they pulled the plug. And this is that story. If you're new to my channel, you might be wondering why a Ubisoft sponsorship is a big deal. So let me explain. My style of content is a little bit, uh, breaking the rules for entertainment. A little bit of a white hat action. So this is the type of vision that we're going to be trying to aid through Hacker Rooney. Modding, uh, walking in a gray area of the rules of the video game industry, particularly on Rainbow Six Siege, the game that brought my channel to be what it is. So if Ubisoft were to sponsor a video, it'd be like, okay, we're chill with that. We get it, we see the entertainment value, and we understand what we're doing, and we approve of you. I had a feeling they didn't understand who exactly it was they were sponsoring. I, I told the marketing agency, I was like, look, do, do they know of the content that I've done? Are they aware of the previous videos I've done? Oh my... Bro, oh my gosh. I understand with like making those types of videos, making like the weird hacking the game types of videos, you're gonna, you're excluded from like creator cups. I have control over every player in the lobby. Except DreamHack, DreamHack they invited, thanks DreamHack. Ubisoft flew me out to LA. We had all these like months of writing a script. Meme review. Testing, <laughs> how you doing? Preparing like a gadget. A real. Grismont mine. They had a professional camera crew, a bunch of people watching. I mean, this was pretty serious. So I show up on set of this video that's sponsored by Ubisoft. They brought all this together. All this money has gone into this. Truck. Big truck. And I see them on set learning about my previous videos, learning about, you know, what I've done in the past that could potentially uh, cause problems for the sponsorship here. Like I saw on the face of the lead director that put all this together, I saw her face as she was coming to the realization of my, my previous content. I mean, maybe it was arrogant of me to assume they've seen my old videos. Maybe it was arrogant just to think that like they knew about me because it's a big company. I had everything prepared for it, we're ready to go, we're on set. Suddenly they're they're changing the script a lot. They're uh, they're very clearly unhappy, the, clearly concerned. All the way from the top? Oh yeah. As you can imagine, it's wildly awkward at this point. So before I go any further with exactly what happened, uh, what the video was about, anything like that, I wanna say to Ubisoft, as well as the marketing agency that handled all of this, I'm sorry for the way this all went down. I'm sorry for the monetary losses. Ultimately, my breaking of the terms of service on many different accounts is what led to this happening. So I'm Mr. Homeless, and I'm genuinely sorry for breaking the rules that you, Ubisoft, had set in front of my face that I agreed to each and every time I fired up the game. So we're there on set. We've got like 15 people watching. There's Ubisoft executives, there's a marketing agency, all these people watching me be Mr. Homeless on screen. We've been filming for five hours or more all day long. We've been filming. It's a one day shoot, so we're squeezing as much as we can. And then we're getting to the gameplay section, right? Where I'm supposed to I'm supposed to play Rainbow Six Siege with this Grismont mine that I helped design. <laughs> Designed it to be the mouse, you know, is the gameplay. It's gonna be lit. It actually was pretty sick. Oh we gotta knock! We actually gotta kill! We killed Ash! We killed Ash with the Grismont mine! So I sign into my Ubisoft account on this gaming PC they have there. The, the gameplay is projected onto the wall, so everybody in the room's looking at it. And right after I sign in, the game fires up, and for whatever reason, man, this account gets permanently banned right there on set. Oh my god. Also, it doesn't matter if you die. Okay. 
It doesn't matter. Something's making noise. That doesn't look good. Oh! <laughs> that doesn't look very good, does it? It sure does not. Everybody's kind of like, wait a second, you know, whoa, what's, what's going on? Are they permanently oh, banned? No. It's moving. It doesn't. I've been permanently banned. Yeah. Okay. What does that do? What does that mean? We're going to have to sign into a different account. <gasps> that was this account. That was, that was... I think it was something to do with the 10 PC video. I'm not certain why this one specifically got banned, but I thought it wasn't banned. And my sweet wife is over there just trying not to bust up laughing. And I'm just like, painfully awkward. Oh, right. So this video was to sponsor. It was supposed to like shout out Ella's elite skin. We went through this whole process of putting this together. I'm gonna play with this. You know, it's kind of fits the theme of my videos, my channel. Again, the budget was pretty lit. Like, like it was a big budget. And the one step further, the, like the plan for the one step further that I always do, you know, was- can you ever play rank with this? No, I play ranked with a pineapple. It was gonna be actual Ella, like actual Ella there playing ranked with the Grizz online. So what's even wilder is we're gonna have a real Ella play ranked with it. Uh, dude, I know, dude. The whole thing feels like a fever dream. I, I still barely believe it happened. We film all this in November and understandably, Ubisoft expresses their concerns with where they're posting their sponsored content. Nothing got canceled. There was a, they didn't pull the plug. We just continued, you know, to, to go to go forward. But I knew something was wrong. Now, very clearly, this video is not on my channel, and you know that. But I want to point out, November and December, they're the highest ad rates for YouTubers. This is like the, the big time to post a bunch of videos. Being the YouTuber that I am, I had some pretty big videos planned, filmed, ready to go. Two pretty big videos that I have completed and not released. I didn't have the ad revenue from these three videos being posted, as well as didn't get the money from the sponsorship for the Ubisoft video. Spawn Peak Six Siege. It's a real thing. The greatest Rainbow Six Siege ripoff that it exists. Seen. I made it. I didn't just debate everyone. I just haven't been able to release it yet. Spawn Peak Six Siege, just like I just said, I'm, I'm going to make like the memeiest copy ripoff of Rainbow Six Siege. And well, I did. Ashen Jaeger right on the front of the game. That's a pretty cool feature. I like that. I don't know who came up with that, but that's a pretty cool feature. Very accurate. And there's gotta be alpha packs though, right? It's gotta be alpha packs. Oh, alpha packs, baby! Mm -hmm. Alpha packs, I got a thousand alpha packs. Thousand alpha pack opening, come right now. Alpha, open now. Oh, 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 oh black eyes. Black eyes, duplicate, duplicate. Black eyes, black eyes, black eyes. Uh, everything's ACOG. There's freaking ACOG in the street! It's only one map, it's house, it's designed just to be a bunch of spawn peeking basically. It's 5v5, only Ash and Jaeger, only ACOGs, the pistol has ACOGs. Oh my gosh, the pistol has an ACOG. It's got the, it's ACOGs with police sirens on top. Even the drones. My drone is there! It was, um... Okay, uh, I know this map. This is very much the same map. Somebody just straight up ripped off house map. The same sniper spot, okay? Seems like everyone rips off house map. That's the first thing they rip off is house. This is cool. All right, construction. Kids bedroom, yep, that's that's the same. This is a game right here. Now this is a game. It was a good time. Uh, 1v1 Marley. Bro, what is this? <laughs> what have you created? <laughs> what have you done? <laughs> what is this? Go to the alpha packs, go to the alpha packs. <laughs> What's on the alpha? Pack. Go to Bro, what? You get a thousand for free! I got black eyes! <laughs> Marley gets black eyes! Hey, what's up, man? What are you doing? Oh, oh my god, your face! <laughs> this is so dumb! This is this is Spawn Peak Six Siege. You're still so butthurt over the fact they took Gay Cog ACOG years ago. You've made a game with drone ACOG. <laughs> I think you've lost your mind. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's fight. We... Itch. Get yeah, drop shot it. Wait, we just traded? We just traded. Wait, what? I know Why exactly where you're spawning. Wait. I'm just a little acorn. Leave me alone. <laughs> you can't shoot through that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could shoot you. I shot you once. You can see everybody's health. <gasps> Bruh! <Woo>! Bruh! <laughs> Wait, so is there a uh, detection thing when you go out of the map? Uh, oh, no, there's not. Interesting. Dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> I got killed by my own homeless fan. It was a very good time. I enjoyed playing it. I still have it. Unfortunately, 
I don't think it'll ever be released, but I have proof that it exists, and I'm not just a YouTuber that's gonna lie to you and say I'm making a game and not make it. So, it's real. Maybe one day I'll be able to release it. Now, my favorite one of all these videos, unreleased videos, the ACOG that we all love and miss, I was actually able to hack it back into the game. That's it, that's, that's ACOG Zoom. That's, that's the freaking ACOG. We're gamers, boys. That's insane. That's it. If released would have been one of the more notorious videos on my channel. No, it would not have been. Uh, what? We're gonna start, look at him. Oh, actually <laughs> hacking the ACOG back into the game on any gun. This was insane. There's a multiplier unit within the game. Zoom. That you can modify to make the 1x scopes zoom in like two and a half times, four times, or 16 times. That's an enemy's gun. That's an enemy shotgun. This is probably the closest I ever got to black hatting. Uh, it genuinely gave me an advantage. It, I, I, it was the exact same thing as having the ACOG on the gun, just a different reticle. No! I didn't go into rank this time out of like ethics. <laughs> Uh, it genuinely just gave me an advantage. It wasn't like the other stuff that's kind of just me me and makes your teammates angry that you're trash. Like, it genuinely gave me an advantage. It was an epic gamer moment. In my very, very first game, my very first game, the very first round as Jaeger, I aced. Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Yes! One friendly operator remaining. Yes! We freaking ace! Oh my goodness! <sighs> my first time with Jaeger ACOG, and it's a freaking ace, dude. We come back. We come back strong. Oh, I'm not tearing up, bro. I'm not. Which you just can't. You can't predict that. And as you can imagine, it was hard to sit on that content. It was really hard to sit on that content. I mean, it was a legit an ACOG hacked back into the game. Far as you can go. Oh, it doesn't work on his scope, but watch this. Oh, oh my goodness, look how far zoomed in we are. Okay, hold on. Oh. What? Hold on. I mean, that's insane, dude. That's what, we, that's what we've been waiting for, you know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. That is ridiculous. Oh, look at that flick. So why were these videos never posted? Where are they? Why were they not posted on the channel? The marketing agency said they're wanting to pull out or trying to convince them not to, basically. So in my mind, I'm thinking, I don't post these videos because that's not going to help the situation at all. These are not videos that are going to help my situation with this sponsorship that we already spent a ton of time and money on putting together. I don't post them because I'm hoping the sponsorship will go through. Then they told me Ubisoft's pulling the plug. They pulled the plug in the whole sponsorship. They, man, they had to have spent so much money. Again, I want to apologize to Ubisoft for breaking the terms of service of the game. That is my fault. That's my fault regardless of the entertainment purpose. So they pulled the plug. They paid me half of the sponsorship deal, which I appreciate. I really appreciate that. During this time, that's when I had to put together a video. So I put together the Mind Control Minecraft. From our brainwaves. I just played Minecraft with my mom. As well as the sponsored the Minecraft so for the first time. That's a bones thing. This is largely why those happened. So why don't I post the videos now? Why didn't I post them after Ubisoft paid me half? I came to the realization that posting this style of content without a clear and proper purpose, yeah. even though I always did it, for the entertainment value, that posting this style of content is is promoting something that I should not and do not support, which yeah. is, if you're breaking the rules, it's okay as long as everyone's watching and calling you a cool kid, which is not okay. I do not promote breaking the terms of service. I don't promote hacking in any manner that's against the rules. So one more time, I'd like to say to Ubisoft that I'm genuinely sorry for hacking in your game and breaking the terms of service that I, I agreed to many times on many accounts. So I thought I'd use these videos instead of just posting them and supporting that message to say, I'm sorry. And I think this will be my last Rainbow Six Siege video 
for a while. There are other games that support this style of, you know, modding, hacking, that type of thing I might move to. I'll still be playing Rainbow Six Siege on stream, so maybe occasionally. I think what hurt the most was that for a second there, I felt like, like they approved of me. Like Ubisoft knew who I was, they knew what I did, they saw the entertainment value of my content and said, okay, we get that. We approve of it, we see the value that you add to the Rainbow Six Siege community. I knew deep down they, they hadn't seen my videos, they didn't know who I was, and they were just making a mistake. I knew they didn't care, but I guess I just hoped, I hoped that they did. How did you get the name Basically Homeless? It might surprise you, it's a little heavier than you might think, but I thought a million subscribers, that's time, time to tell it. So I told my story live, so I'm gonna put that in here now. Go easy on me, don't make a super cut of me going, uh, um, uh, I'm gonna be uh, sharing my story, kind of like how I got here, and telling you uh, like how, how the Lord brought me to where I am through surrendering and through, uh, through faith. Um, so, uh, one thing you might not know about me, uh, was that when I was little, I, I loved video games. It was crazy. I know. It's, it's hard to believe. But, uh, I loved them so much that I, I would, I would probably play too much, uh, if my parents hadn't made me put a 30 minute timer on the microwave, uh, growing up. So, like, I, I had a time limit of how much I could play a day. When I was little, it was 30 minutes. So, uh... I don't know if you played through Mario 64 by chance, but it takes a long, long time when you do it in 30 minute intervals. Uh, but now uh, I get to do my dream job of playing video games all day. And so that's, that's basically homeless to my YouTube channel. If, if you don't know, I mean, I do YouTube and I live stream on Facebook. That's, that's my job, play video games and it's great. Um, and uh, I'm actually gonna be talking about how I got the name basically homeless, which is a little heavy for me. I've never actually told anyone that other than uh, my wife, Olivia. Um, she's the, uh, the, the unit of measurement, like we said, which in case you didn't know, that's like, she weighs exactly 100 pounds. So like me weighing 196 pounds, I'd be like, I weigh 1.96 Olivia's, right? And so like, if, if, if there was a dog, this massive dog the other day, uh, Daisy, about 120 pounds, it's 1.2 Olivia's. Anyway, uh, I've, I've only ever told her uh, the story of how I got based on this, and this is kind of that, and like the faith and surrender that the, the Lord kind of uh, worked through me to bring me where I am. Um, uh, so I'm going to tell you how I met Olivia. Uh, and it was about 10, 10 years ago. Um, I'm going to show you a picture of what I looked like at the time. This is, this is the one I hope they lost. But uh, uh, that's me taking a selfie on a camcorder. You know those camcorders? I've got it turned around and I've got my best smolder on there, as you can see. And uh, that's, that's what I was working with, trying to, trying to you know, uh, send some, some love letters to Olivia. Um, I, don't, I don't even remember Nathaniel talking about the love letter that never reached his love in fifth grade or sixth grade, whatever it was. Well, I was a freshman in high school, and my love letters, they reached their target. You know what I mean? They got there. The cringy love letters, they made. Um, and so it was, mo it was love text, because I would not have the courage to... Uh, hand deliver a love letter to her, but I, I would send her, you know, like love text or whatever, but that's how I thought I was gonna win a heart. Uh, which, funny story, uh, I, you know, I, she knew I liked her a lot, she just did. And uh, uh, I, I, I had a Twitter, no one followed me, but I had a Twitter where I would pour out my heart to her, but to no one, because no one followed me. But, uh, so I, I wanted her to see it, because I'm like, if I can just get her to see these tweets, how much I love her, then obviously she'll be in love. Right, this is the only ex the only thing that can happen. So I asked her, I was like, "Hey, what's it going to take for you to get Twitter?" Uh, and she said, "I think you'll really like the Twilight books. I think you should read the first one, and then I'll make Twitter." So uh, I read the first Twilight book all the way through it as a 14 year old dude, and uh, I uh, don't share that story often. She loves to share it, but um, I uh, I read through it. I liked it. I'm not going to lie; it was a pretty good book. They did talk about like the, uh, the main character. They always talk about like how sparkly and like beautiful the dude was and that was a little weird, but it was a decent book. Anyway, uh, 
I had those feelings for her for like 10 years, and I, well, I'm married to her now, and so uh, I wish they would take that down now. <laughs> but um, that, was, uh, that was me in high school. And uh, so uh, later in high school, uh, what, what I kind of like, how I got going in my, uh, I guess I've always thought of myself as like a business dude or whatever, but in high school, when I was 17, I uh, was working at Chick-fil-A, broke my phone, I bought a, uh, bought a screen for the phone on eBay for 10 bucks, because to repair it was like 120 bucks, I broke it, fixed myself with this $10 screen on eBay, and I was like, man, this is, uh, this is I can make some money here, right? Uh, and so I started fixing friends' phones, and I, uh, I would buy broken phones and fix them and sell them, and this is like, I started a business from this, and it actually started going pretty well, like it kind of it kind of started to take off. Um, so a lot of people don't know that. Like I started with a, like a brick and mortar phone repair store out of high school. Like I didn't go to college. I was, what's, what's the, the third year of high school? Is that junior? Yeah. So I, uh, I, uh, I did that, started junior year. And uh, actually when I was 18, it was going so well, I bought a house. Um, and uh, I, it ended up having three locations. I had one in Plainview, Texas, one in Amarillo, Texas, and one in Lubbock, Texas. That was, uh, that was how it was going. It was going pretty good. And all this time, I was, I think, uh, well, I definitely, I definitely was I, was, I was prideful, I was arrogant. I would just, I had a bunch of money. I would buy whatever I wanted. I was, I was that guy. You know, you know those entrepreneur people on Instagram, they're like posting stories, like showing their cars and stuff. Uh, and they're not, I don't know, I don't know who watches them now, but they're not fun to watch. I mean, it's kind of, uh, that I was kind of like that person that was like showing off all their stuff and buying stuff and arrogant. I was living for me. I was, I was doing whatever I wanted to do. You know what I mean? I was, uh, I was claiming to be a Christian at this time. All this time, I would always claim to be a Christian. I would profess my mouth. I would say, I, I follow Jesus. I'm a Christian. Oh, okay, good. I just, I'm glad they took the other one down. Uh, I would, I would claim to follow Jesus. That was uh, just all the time. But I was, uh, I was living without faith. I was not surrendered. I was, I was just doing whatever I wanted. That was, that was what was going on. Um, now, I'm going to read some scripture um, that might help set up what happens next with my business and how things are going. There's Matthew 23, 12. It says, whoever exalts himself will be humble, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. There's Proverbs 3:34. that says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. And uh, James 4, 6, it's quoted more times than this, but I'm going to read it again, where James quotes that proverb, and he says, but he gives more grace, therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. And one thing that's always uh, interested me about those scriptures is that the word used for opposes in that, it, it means sets himself against, right? So if you read that again, it, it's God sets himself against the proud, gives uh, grace to the humble. And so, um, you know, I... I was a pretty nice guy. I'd say I was like, by the world standards, you know, I'd like give five bucks to somebody in need. Occasionally, I would, uh, I, w I would do things that would make me feel better. You know, I would go to church on Sundays, and I actually remember one time walking out of church, be like, man, I feel good. And that was great. You know, what I mean, that was that was it. I would go to church to just to feel good. Um, that's it, it, it was by the world standards. I was a pretty decent guy, but it was. Uh, I want to read another scripture. You've probably heard before, Revelation 3.16, so because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth, right? So all this time I'm calling myself a Christian, but I'm doing what I want. I was not surrendered. I was, uh, how you say, basically Christian. That's, that's what I was, right? I was just claiming I'm Christian, but doing my own thing. Um, uh, I... I I had no faith that, the, that my life is the Lord's. Uh, there's a verse that says, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Uh, and Proverbs 11.2, pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. So I was the definition of a fool. I was arrogant, and uh, I, I very much was, was finding my own... I, I thought I knew better than the Lord. That was my pride. I was like, I think what I am going to do for myself is better than anything the Lord has for me. That's what I was saying. I, I wouldn't have said that. I wouldn't have told you that. I wouldn't have admitted it. I don't even know if in that moment I knew it fully, but that's, that's what was happening. That's, that's a form of pride that the enemy, like, sneaks in there. He sneaks in that, that pride of, like, you know, just do this. It's okay. But that's, 
That's where I was and it was wrong. Now, I know this is really confusing, but my business started to take a downhill turn, right? It's, it, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have called that, right? I had to sell my house, uh, two of the three cars I had, which you shouldn't have three cars. There is no need for three cars. I had three, though. <laughs> um, I, uh, my business was, uh, it grew really fast. You know, I had those three locations, three brick mortar locations, and it was uh, absorbing money. It, that, that was, that's the term for it. It was literally just like, it was like, I'm going to give a figure, it was like $20,000 a month negative, right? That's how much you had to put into it to continue it to go. It was money gone. That's, that's what was happening. Uh, uh, so you're saying if I sold my house, where was I living, right? Well, I actually moved into one of the stores, the, the store I had in Lubbock, the phone repair store. I was living in the back of it. And uh, it was like a storage unit, but it had a, it had a bathroom. And I had a, I, you know, I had put a bed in there and it had running water. So it was like, it was like a storage unit with like maybe a little office section. And you might think that's where I got the term basically homeless, but it's not. That was, that was just where I was living. It, I guess it could have influenced the thought a little bit, but I was living out of the back of the store. And uh, I, did, I didn't have a home there. I didn't have any friends there in Lubbock. I, uh, I remember for my 21st birthday, I actually had a really good time because some of my friends drove up, which, which was like, it was... They happened to be working there that day, and so we just kind of hung out. But I didn't have any friends there. It, I was really far from my family. I was, I was pretty much homeless in Lubbock, living out of this, this storage unit. Um, now, uh, this time, it was really difficult. This time in my life was super difficult. Uh, so my business was, was on its last legs. I didn't know what to do. Now, I knew in my mind, I heard my whole life, you know, the Lord's going to do anything. And so I... Uh, I started reading the Bible. I, I had this like hope that I was like, you know, the Lord can save my business. I know he can. He has that power. He can do anything. I knew that. And I would, I just, I knew that, right? And I think we all know that here. We know that the Lord can do anything. If I asked all of you, can the Lord do anything? You would definitely say yes, and you would believe that. But the Bible says even the demons know the, the, the Lord is all powerful, and they know he, he exists. He's real. That doesn't, just knowing that does not, is not what saves you. And that's not what, that's, uh, that's where I was. I, I, I knew he could, and I had, I had that little bit of hope that, you know, like maybe if I like pray enough, maybe if I read enough of the Bible, and I think a little bit, a little bit of my, my Bible reading in that time was uh, like sincere, like I wanted to learn, but it was mostly like for that hope that like maybe he can save my business, that's where I was. Um, but this was, so he, God used this to humble me, right? He, he removed my pride, as the Bible says, will happen. Uh, he removed all my pride. I was living basically Christian. I was not surrendered. I had, I had no faith because I was choosing my, my own direction. Um, I, I had no understanding that my life was not about my happiness. Right? I was just seeking my own thing. No understanding that my life uh, was not, not about my own happiness. It's about, it's about, uh, it's about the Lord. It's about Christ. Um, now, I was so prideful in this time that I, I never showed anyone that this, this was happening, right? I, even a lot of my closest friends, they, uh, they didn't know. Like, they just thought I was doing my own thing. I told them, you know, I kind of sold my stores or whatever, and I'm moving to Arlington. I had to move in with my parents in Arlington, which, if you know anything about, like, someone that's like that, I think would maybe... I, w I was a prideful 21-year-old claiming to be this big entrepreneur, and now I'm moving to my parents and I'm with a lot of debt. And so, as you can imagine, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a bummer. <laughs> it was a bummer. So I moved with my parents, and it was a rough time. They had a lot of cats, a lot of cats. Uh, rough time. Uh, it was uh, bad circumstances for an adult man. I, I was actually, I was, I was there, I was with my parents, it was pretty lonely. Uh, I couldn't find a job. Uh, I searched for a job for like six months. Uh, now, I remember thinking, right, I'm living with my parents, and I can't find a job, and I drive like a 1995 BMW that almost has AC and a stick shift that was like 1500 bucks. Thanks, Dad. Uh, but uh, I was like, the silver lining was that I can leave the toilet seat up, right? I can leave the toilet seat up when I use the restroom. I'm like, that's nice. But then... But then my dad comes to me, he says, uh, the cats, 
drink from the toilet, and I don't like for their paws to touch the, the gross rim of the toilet. And so you need to put the seat down, right? And so talk about God uh, humbling you. I was putting the toilet seat down for a cat. That's where I was. That was is what I was doing. So uh, I'm sitting there sad, uh, no money, putting the toilet seat down for a cat every day, uh, which is a good habit to learn, even though it's for a cat. Uh, uh, and actually, at the time, Olivia, who I'm still crazy about this whole time for 10 years, she, she moved to Arlington, but I, I didn't have four bucks to buy her a cup of coffee. So even if I had asked her out somewhere, uh, I don't know, do you want to go like sit at a park? I don't know. I don't, like, uh, so I'd never asked her out because I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. If I, I, even if she said yes, I couldn't take her out anywhere. So I remember, uh, like, I'm in, like, so this is like my rock bottom. This is where, uh, like, even if I wanted to have pride, like, what can I have pride about now, right? Uh, so finally, with these circumstances, I, I was, well, like, I want to point out that, uh, so, like, this is what the Lord did, had to do to me to, to pull the pride out of my hands, you know what I mean? And you don't have to do that. Just don't, just don't be as stubborn as me. Uh, but that's, uh, that's how the Lord... Pulled pride the pride, the pride the pride out of my hands. Um, and so I remember I, I was sitting there and I, I finally surrendered to the Lord. I said, look, I, I understand whatever you have for me is, is like your plan is what my life is about now. I know that I cannot, this is not right. I, I chose to start surrendering to the Lord, putting my faith in him. And that's, that, that's what I started doing in that moment, right? I felt his presence. Uh, and so I had this, these like terrible circumstances, still putting the toilet seat down for a cat, still living with my parents. And, uh, but I had this joy now. I had this joy, this almost an unexplainable joy, because I, I was living for the Lord. And I, I, so I was, I was just like, kind of like, what? Well, you know, it's, it's no longer sad. I, I just had an unexplainable joy. That's the best way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, and, and so... I felt the Lord tell me to go work at Verizon. Uh, and so the next day, they hired me at Verizon. Like one day, it's kind of crazy, right? And then everything got better. Uh, it didn't. It didn't get better, actually. Uh, it was a terrible job. There was, uh, it was still pretty poor circumstances, still being my parents for a long time. Uh, but like <clears throat> this, I, I started to learn, I started to gain wisdom that whether I was living, you know, out of the back of the store or if I was living actually in the streets, or if I was in a mansion in California, like, no matter where I am on this planet, that, you know, I'm, I'm basically homeless, because uh, our souls are built for heaven, for eternity with God. And so, that's like the, uh, the basis of my understanding for my YouTube channel was the, like, the name of it was, like, here I'm basically homeless, like, in this world, I'm basically homeless, uh, because... Uh, we're, we're, built, we're built to be in heaven, God. So, uh, I, uh, I, like, I just confessed, repented, uh, surrendered totally to him. Uh, he changed my life. Uh, so I, I had the YouTube channel, and actually for the longest time, I'd put up a gameplay video. I just started like putting them up when I lived with my parents. So I just had nothing better to do, you know what I mean? So I named it basically Helmets, and I would, like a video would get 15 views, and it did that for like six months. And the 15, like 13 of the 15 views were me. Like I would refresh a page and watch it. And so that, I mean, that happened for the longest time. So it's definitely was not a situation where it was like, I made a YouTube channel and the Lord's like, here's all the views. You know, it's, it was, it was a, a long time of just putting videos on YouTube and getting no views. Um, but I, I, my life was surrendered to the Lord. And that, that's the point is my life is now surrendered to the Lord. So I, I, I knew that the Lord had a plan for me, and that was the purpose. And His His plan was now my plan. Um, so I had a job opportunity in Amarillo to move back to Amarillo, move there. Uh, job didn't work out, but I was started making like four or five hundred bucks um, from YouTube a month. And my other sister Jennifer, she let me move into their house for uh, for one hundred fifty bucks a month, right? And so. You do the math, and I've got like 300 bucks a month, but at least I can, you know, live somewhere, living with my sister. And uh, now, 
Uh, I was seeking God. I was devoted to him. I had this joy. Um, even though my sister also had a cat, I had this joy. And, and it, it was just my business failing. I just was learning that it was God's, God's way of working in all things for my good. It's Romans 8.28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So uh, you might know if you've been following my YouTube channel for a long time, that around 30,000 subs, uh, 30,000 subscribers on YouTube, uh, I felt the Lord tell me that I should delete my YouTube channel. Because I'm, I'm really obsessive. Like I'm a super obsessive person. I, was, I would upload twice a week and it was like I would just wake up, start making a video, and then go to sleep. And it, like, it was a repeat, and I, I loved it. I was like, this is what I'm doing. So I felt like the Lord was saying, like, you got to release that to me. you gotta, you got to delete it. And honestly, I feel like the Lord was just telling me to release it to him. But I, I kind of like, because I'm obsessed, I was like, oh, i got to delete it. That's, that's the, i got to delete it. And so I told him on YouTube, I'm like, I'm deleting my YouTube channel. This is what I'm doing because I knew, like, I, I battled with it, but I knew that like, the Lord's plan is my plan now. If I did the same thing, if I said, no, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to be obsessive, I'm going to make all the videos I want, then it was like the same thing as last time. I'm making my own decisions. I'm having no faith that the Lord's plan is better for me. So this is where the Lord tested me, and I put my faith in him. I said, okay, I'm deleting my YouTube channel. That's it. So uh, I did that, and it's, uh, and I, like, I know in my heart that, like, that was my decision. I was truly deleting my YouTube channel. Like, that was the, that was the plan. And then this other YouTuber you might know, uh, Poconut Bra, uh, he, cool name. He, he, uh, he posted a comment. He's like, you know, I'm a Christian, too. I feel like this is from the Lord. And in an essence, what he said is, you've done good. Don't delete your YouTube channel. I feel like this is from the Lord. And it was, like, it was very detailed, and I knew it was from the Lord. And so... So I didn't, and that was, that was that story of, like, that's God testing my faith and, and like, making me show him I am, I am surrendered. Like, I surrender this to you. So uh, about that time, when I'm living with Jennifer, $150 a month and the other cat, uh, I finally uh, reconnected with Olivia. And so I was still a little bit goofy, you know? I'm super cool now. Believe it. But I was a little bit goofy, so this is the first time I started live streaming, and this is when the infamous comment happened. Oh, okay. Uh, this is when the infamous comment happened that, you know, your nose looks like a double barrel shotgun, Mr. Helmus. That, it happened. It was a real thing, uh, and that, that took off forever. And that happened live, and so I reacted to it live. I was like, oh, that dude just roasted me. <laughs> it was actually, it was a pretty good time. It was a pretty good time. Um, but so we did finally reconnect. I had, you know, a few bucks for coffee. She said yes. And, uh, you know, now we're married, so it worked out, even though, uh, even though it was a little goofy. But, um, like, I, I guess you'd say I pursued Olivia for, like, nine years, right? Which might sound like a long time. Might sound like, you know, I'm crazy or a stalker uh, or something. But, uh, and uh, what it makes me think about is that love, was, it came from the Lord. That love came from the Lord, that love he gave me for Olivia. And I think about makes me think about how I, like, I'm just a human. I love her so much, all right? And uh, I think about how much God loves us. And, uh, and so, uh, like, if you think about it, the Lord has been waiting for you for much longer than 10 years. Uh, like, he's been waiting, he made dirt. The Lord made dirt. He's the creator of all things. He's waited for you since dirt was made right? He's, he, he's like here, he's right now saying I love you, right? No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, he's saying I love you. And so, and he demonstrated that by dying on a, dying on a cross. It's a real thing. Uh, and I, I like to stop and think about that for a sec, how like Christ died on a cross for us, because uh, that's one of those things that you hear people just like yelling sometimes, Christ died for you, right? So you got to take a second and realize that it's not just a character in a book. It's not a, like a mystic thing. There is Jesus Christ who died for you. Died for you. So that's like a, it's a real thing. And if you're living basically Christian like I was, then what you're saying is, like, I see that. Thanks. See you later. Right? It's like, I'm going to do my own thing now. Thank you. Though. Right? That's what it, as if you're basically Christian, 
and you're doing your own thing and not surrendered to the Lord, that's what you're doing. And so, uh, I, I just, so my, my business failed because God loved me so much that, that, like, he had to pull that pride out of me. He had to pry it out of my fingers. I was holding on so tight uh, that that's just what it took. Um, I said, I don't need your faith. I don't need your humility. Like, I can, I can do it my own way. So, like, I believe, like, you're seeing this right now. Like, you're here right now. Then uh, God is saying to you, uh, I love you. I want your pride to be gone so I can be where I need you, right? So that, that absence of pride, that's where joy is found. And so he knows who you are. He knows where your sin is. Like, he, he knows what you've done. He knows everything about you. He loves you. He's like, he's, he's there for you no matter what. So and he's, he's just saying, I, I can pry. The Lord can pry the pride out of your fingers, right? He can, and he loves you. He will. He did to me. And the thing is, you can release it to him. You don't. Uh, you can release your pride to him, and you, you don't have to. Uh, you don't have to hit rock bottom. You can just release your pride to him. You can choose that anytime. You can choose to surrender to Christ, and uh, and he always has a better plan. His plan is always better. I can. Uh, that is that it is the truth that the Lord's plan is better, no matter what it is. Um. Uh. So I kind of just want to share, like, how do you surrender, right? If you are a living, basically Christian, but want to surrender and put your faith in Christ, how do you do it? Three quick things, and then I'm done. So, uh, so you have to confess your pride. Confess your pride to, to the Lord, right? And if you ask him what it is, he'll show you. The Lord will show you what your pride is. He, he might even be showing you right now. I think even when you think a lot of time, it's like if you think about pride, you can, a lot of, you can think about what your pride is immediately. You can be like, I'm doing this, and I know that if the Lord told me to stop doing that, that I would have to battle with that. I would have to be like, wait a second, like, really? Right? Um, so I think the Lord, he'll show you pride, especially if you ask. And so you have to take that pride, and you have to repent of that. So you have to choose to not do that any longer. So you have to say, this is where I was being prideful. I confess this and choose to no longer do that. I don't want this pride, and you repent of it. And so you surrender to him. Uh, number three, you surrender to him by constantly remembering it is, it's not about you. Your life's not about you. It's not about your own happiness. It's not about doing your own thing. Uh, it's about God's will. Uh, he loves you more uh, than anyone ever can or will. Uh, he wants you to surrender to him and not be basically Christian. So, uh, he wants you to understand that here on earth, it's about him. And here, if you're here, you're, you're basically homeless. So, let me pray for you. Lord, we thank you for uh, this retreat. We thank you for uh, this time we got to spend together. I thank you for Karen putting all this together for us. I thank you that we got to play a bunch of video games together. I thank you, Lord, for uh, for uh, this church and all these guys. Um, I pray, Lord, that uh, that you would uh, help us learn more about you and grow closer to you. And uh, we pray that we would all surrender to. You. You're the only way. Jesus name, amen. I have more content coming out regularly. This was a weird, weird couple months for me. If you're still here watching this part of the video, you'll watch, you'll like my live streams. I stream live every day now. So link below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe or something. It's the man with the Wii remote.